Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Now we have a look at uh, PMF and CRF example. Suppose uh, we have, suppose we observe three calls at a telephone switch where voice calls and data calls are equally likely. Let X denote the number of voice calls, Y the number of data calls, and let R be the uh, multiplication of X and Y. The sample space of the experiment and the corresponding values of the random variables are given over here. So here you can see this is a sample space. Uh, of course, again, just like in uh, three tosses of coins, we have got either all the calls are data or all the calls are voice and some cases two data and one voice and uh, two voice and one data. So these are the possible combinations. And the probability is 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 8 for all because uh, voice and data calls are equally likely. So here in case of uh, x denotes the voice calls. So if all the three calls are data then of course there is no voice call. Here we have got only one voice call, uh, one voice call, two voice calls and uh, one voice call and so on. And here we have got three voice calls. And here we have got all three data calls of course in this case no voice call and the sim similarly we have got two uh, data calls over here and uh, two data calls over here and so on and this is simply the multiplication of these so 3 into 0 of course r is equal to 0 here r is equal to 0 because uh, either it is data and or voice so of course uh, there is nothing common uh, between these two in this case we have got two data calls, two data calls, two voice calls, two data calls and so on. So we see that R is equal to zero of either outcome DD or the VBB means all the data calls or all the voice calls occur so that PR is equal to zero is simply probability of all the uh, data calls and probability of all the voice calls and we simply add them up uh, 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 is equal to 1 by 4. For the other six outcomes of the experiment R is equal to 2 it is the outcome is the, is the same and the uh, probability is also the same so we simply add them up for all the rest R is equal to 2 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and we get 3 by 4 so in case uh, r is equal to 2 the pmf is 3 by 4 and uh, for uh, 0 it is 1 by 4 and for 1 it is uh, 0 and cdf is 1 by 4 here again it is 1 by 4 and uh, here it is 1 so you can see that here it is 0 for here it is 1 and it remains the same until this point then at 2 it is 3 by 4 so from this point to this point it remains the same but it goes to 1 from this point and from between 2 and 3 it remains the same because this is what we said that uh, over here previously that between jumps the graph of the CDF of the discrete random variable X is a horizontal line. So between the jumps we have got horizontal line. Between this jump and this jump it is horizontal. Here between these two jumps it is here it is 1 by 4, here it is 1. So between the jumps it is the same horizontal and here from 2 to 3 it is horizontal same. Another example, in a test of integrated circuits, there is a probability P that each circuit is rejected. Let Y equal the number of tests up to N including the first test that discovers a reject. 
what is the PMF of Y and uh, uh, we have to find CDF if P is equal to 1 by 4 so in this problem the <coughs> success is that the fully uh, the faulty circuit is found and rejected so it clearly it is a problem of geometric probability uh, because uh, prob uh, geometric probability law is the number of trials carried out until the occurrence of the first success so uh, pmf for uh, geometric one is p1 minus p y minus uh, this, uh, power y minus 1 so we simply take uh, for pmf values five value, uh, values of five uh, y 1 2 3 4 and 5 and we just plug in this value over here in this equation of pmf and we get these results so these are the pmf and uh, to get cdf is cdf we simply add up add them up so 1 by 4 here 3 by 16 plus 1 by 4 is 7 by 16 7 by 16 plus 9 by 64 is equal to 37 divided by 64 and so on averages mean median and mode so <coughs> what is the average simply we, are, it's for, uh, we take an example here we have got 10 students who have got uh, uh, scores in a quiz 9 5 10 8 like this we simply add them up and divide them by 10 so we get the get the average so uh, the sum of these uh, grades is 68 divided by 10 is equal to 6.8 and uh, <coughs> we are rearrange the number in ascending order and uh, we find that median is 7 because we can see that uh, there are yeah, four scores uh, above Seven and four scores below seven, so it is the median value. And mode is five because the score occurs more often than any other. So you can see that five is the uh, most frequent number over here. So uh, six point eight is the average, seven is the median, and five is the mode. Expected value is defined as the sum of all possible realizations weighted by their probabilities. Expected value is defined as the sum of all possible realizations weighted by their probabilities. So the average is something computed when you already have different realizations while the expected value before you have realizations. This is the main difference. The average is something computed when you already have different realizations while the expected value before you have realizations. For example, the expected value of a uh, of dice is 1 by 6 into 1, 1 by 6 into 2, 1 by 6 because this is a probability and we are just multiplying it by uh, uh, the weighted realization. So this is what it says as a sum of all possible realizations weighted by their probabilities so this is the weight and these are the possible realizations one two three four five and six so we multiplied the possible realizations with the uh, probabilities and we got uh, expected value is 3.5 suppose you roll the dice again three times and obtain three four and five now the average is four but the expected values is still 3.5 so if you take the average of these uh, values then it is four but the expected value is remains the same because it is based on this probability the more observations extracted and the closer the average to the expected value so uh, the difference between this average value what you have uh, achieved after the experiment and what you expect it to be with before the experiment based on the probabilities uh, may the difference may be reduced by increasing the number of observations or experiments 
the expected value of x is e of x is equal to mu of x x multiplied by p of x as we have done before here x is multiplied by probability p of x expectation uh, expectation is a synonym for expected value sometimes the term mean value is also used as a synonym for expected value okay so expected value what is expected value of a uh, uh, bernoulli random variable it is x into uh, p of x expected values of random variables for different random variables the expected values are e of x is equal to expected values of random variables for the bernoulli p random variable e of x is equal to p geometric it is 1 by p for poson it is alpha binomial it is n into p or pascal it is k over p and for discrete uniform it is simply k plus l divided by 2 now we see uh, that the poson pmf is a limiting case of a binomial pmf we will uh, drive this uh, poson pmf from this binomial PMF and uh, uh, how do we do that uh, let's see in the binomial model n the number of Bernoulli trials grows without limit but the expected number of trials n into p remains constant at alpha so let alpha is equal to lambda into t which is the arrival rate multiplied by time and divide the t seconds in uh, t second interval into n time slots each with duration t over n so this at uh, time uh, interval is divided into n time slots in each slot we assume that there is either one uh, arrival with probability p is equal to lambda t divided by n is equal to alpha over n or there is no arrival in the time slot 1 minus p so in this case uh, we have this is uh, simply Bernoulli model we have seen before a uh, binomial model sorry binomial model we have seen before and uh, we just plugged in the value of p over here alpha over n as we have seen over here so Now, uh, multiplying this power of the bracket with the a and n, it gives you a is power k divided by n is power k. And uh, this uh, n choose k is n factorial divided by k factorial n minus k factorial. Uh, this n factorial is uh, actually n minus k n minus k minus 1 up to 3 to 1 and this n minus k factorial is uh, n minus k n minus k minus 1 up to 3 to 1 so we just cancel out this one with this one and uh, here this term is the, just the term for these terms or you may say this is the last term in this expansion So, what we do next is that uh, first we look at some example of this uh, cancellation over here as well. This will help. This example over here uh, will like, help us to understand how these are cancelled out. So let's take some numerical values to understand the cancellation of the terms. Suppose n is equal to seven and k is equal to three. Then uh, seven choose three is equal to 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial 7 minus 3 factorial and uh, if we expand uh, take the factorial 7 and uh, 4 what we get over here 7 6 5 5 4 factorial and 7 minus 3 is equal to 4 factorial so 
is four four factorial in numerator and denominator are cancelled and we get seven five six and three factorial so what we need to observe is that the number of uh, uh, terms or you may say the multiplications over here uh, is the same as this three factorial the number over here and uh, there is another example where we have uh, got 15 and 5 we, again we place 15 factorial here over here 5 factorial 15 minus 5 factorial and we get 15 up to 11 and 10 factorial and 15 minus 5 is again 10 factorial this 10 factorial and 10 factorial they are cancelled so again we can see that we have got 15 14 13 12 11 5 numbers over here and it is this is also 5 so we uh, after simplification the number of terms in the numerator is always equal to k because this is uh, the value of k over here this is our n this is our k so now if we take out n as a common number from all the terms then it will be n k because the number of terms in numerator is equal to k here is the number of terms is how many terms do we have over here we have got k terms over here including this n we have got all k terms so if we take out n from here from this one so of course we will get one over here and here we will divide one by n so taking out n common from this one one the, uh, here it, uh, one is left and this here we get one over n here two over n and here k plus 1 over n mm. now we apply limit and approaches infinity because that's what we have said in uh, the beginning that uh, uh, the number of trials uh, goes without any bound goes infinity so when you apply this limit on this numerator term over here we see that if we replace this n with infinity then we know that 1 over infinity is equal to 0 so in each term only 1 will be left and so the whole term over here this one will become 1 and uh, we already have cancelled out this n k with this n k because this n k was there before from this over here and this n k is the uh, common which we have taken out. So this n to power k and n to power k these two uh, these, these are cancelled out. So in la, uh, what is remaining is a to power k divided by k factorial one minus alpha n n minus k. <coughs> now uh, what we see is that. Uh, this term if we take this term only 1 minus alpha over n and this power n minus k uh, this can be written as 1 minus alpha over n this power n divided by 1 minus alpha n this power k because here minus k is equal to is in, actually in denominator and uh, so we have just placed this term over, uh, this uh, equality over here so we get a k is power k divided by k factorial and this term again over here. Now again we apply the limits and uh, alpha over n in the denominator becomes 0 as you can see that here this alpha over n so n is replaced by infinity alpha divided by infinity is equal to 0 and only 1 is left over here because actually it is minus n over here as we have seen it is you know, that 1 into alpha over n it is 1 minus alpha over n so 1 is left over here and 1 is power k is equal to 1 so here actually 1 is left so the term becomes a is power k divided by k factorial 1 minus alpha over n is power n now we uh, recall the uh, an identity 
where e is equal to uh, limit x approaches to infinity 1 plus 1 over x uh, whole uh, power uh, raised power x so if you apply this one on this one we get this term is becomes equal to e minus alpha this minus is because of this minus one my one minus alpha over n and we just re replace this one with this e minus alpha and we can see this is our boson uh, equation